This video shows you how to take one of your existing, on-premise virtual machines, and move it up to Vulture. Although in the demo I use a Windows virtual machine as that has extra steps to complete, this video also works for Linux virtual machines also. I demonstrate how it's done and provide step-by-step -step instructions, so anyone can do it. If you plan to use it when the virtual machine is running on Vulture infrastructure, connect to your virtual machine successfully via remote desktop connection. This confirms that RDP is allowed by the virtual machine and working before it's uploaded to Vulture. Its architecture must be 64-bit. The VM needs to be using legacy BIOS, not UEFI, boot. Its disk must use the MBR partitioning scheme, not GPT, and has a separate boot partition marked bootable in the partition table. So long as your existing virtual machine starts then the boot prerequisites are met. The virtual machine has an appropriate bootloader installed. All Windows versions automatically satisfy this requirement. The disk must be 150 gigabytes or smaller. So now I'll show you the virtual machine we will be using during today's demonstration. As you can see when I connect to its desktop, I've changed the default wallpaper. And now if I browse to the root of the C drive, I have put a small text file there called the VM disk just for this demonstration so the disk can be easily identified later on. And if I now run Winver to see what version of Windows the virtual machine is running in this demonstration, you can see that it's Windows 10. This demonstration will also be valid if you are uploading a version of Windows Server. Although at first glance there seem to be a few steps to complete. There are only three steps if it's a Linux virtual machine as steps 1 and 5 are only needed if you are uploading a Windows virtual machine. For each step I will demonstrate how it's done. When all steps are completed then just connect and confirm it's identical to the virtual machine you started with. Step 1 was to upload the latest stable vert IO drivers to Vulture, so let's demonstrate that. Open a web browser. Key Virtuo drivers into its search bar. From the results select the one titled Creating Windows Virtual Machines Using Vert IO Drivers. Scroll down the web page to the Direct Download section. You will see that the first link in the section is called Stable Vert IO Win ISO. If you are using Google Chrome as I am, right click on the link and select Copy Link Address. To prove you have a working direct download link, open a new browser tab and just paste and go. A download should start. You don't need it, so it can be cancelled. Now go to the Vulture website and log on if you're not already. Select Products on the left hand side. Select ISO in the sub menu. Select Add ISO. In the remote URL box, paste in the direct download link address and press the upload button. Creation of the ISO on Vulture will start, it will take about 5 minutes. So just wait till it's done. Step 2 was to convert the virtual machine disk to raw format. So let's demonstrate that. I use the free Starwind V2 converter for this task as it can convert between many VM formats. You can use another tool if you prefer. I however demonstrate how I got it as part of demonstrating this step. Open a web browser. Key Starwind V2 V converter into its search bar. From the results, select the one titled Starwind V2 V converter, converting VM formats. Press the download button and fill in the download form. Although I don't show the install itself as part of this demo, install the package on the PC that will be doing the VM disk format conversion.
once finished open the package. Select the type and then location of the source VM disk. Select the type and then location of the destination VM disk. Although, IMG and RAW are the same thing I changed the file extension to RAW from the default. IMG simply for clarity. Once both are selected, hit the convert button. Once the conversion has completed it will open the Starwind website just as a form of advertising just close it. In the package just press the finish button. Step 3 was to upload the raw file to Vulture. So let's demonstrate that. After it has been fully uploaded, find the raw file on Dropbox. Right click on it and select copy Dropbox link. Open Notepad and paste the link in there, so we can amend it. Change the start of the link, so as to be a direct download link. Once amended copy the new direct download link onto the clipboard. Test it is working, by pasting it into a new browser tab. Assuming the test was ok. Navigate onto the Vulture website and paste it into Snapshots under the Products menu. Then hit the Upload button. Because of its size expect the upload to take about 30 minutes. Step 4 was to create a virtual machine in Vulture from the snapshot. So let's demonstrate that. Go to the Vulture website and log on. On the products menu page select the button, deploy instance then, leave the default cloud compute checked. Select the location for the machine. On server type instead of picking one of the Vulture provided operating systems, select the snapshot tab. And then pick the disk you uploaded. Scroll down. For this demo the 55GB default server is fine. Finally press the deploy now button to start the server build. You will see the server you requested has started being initialized. As getting the snapshot you uploaded onto the server will take about 30 minutes, I will pause the video until it's complete. 
as the virtual machine instance has been fully initialized, it now shows as running. However the default label of cloud instance is not very descriptive, and can easily be confused with any other instances you have on this screen. So let's change it to demo. This could have been done as part of the deployment by just scrolling down a bit further to the label input box, but I forgot. So, just click on the instance and you will be taken to the server information screen for that server. On the right hand side you will see the label input box. Type demo in it and press enter. Then when you go back to the main instances page in the future you will see the new label. Just click on the instance name again to return to the server information screen. This time towards the top left you will see a console screen icon to show you what is on the screen of the instance, just press it. When pressed, you will see a screen that indicates that the boot process has failed, the recovery console has automatically started, and it is just asking you what language it should use. This is expected as we have not yet installed the required vert IO drivers. That's the next step. Step 5 was to install vert IO drivers. One of the settings you will see me use later, when I run the actual demonstration, will be to attach the vert IO drivers ISO we uploaded at the start of this video. When we attach an ISO, the instance will automatically be rebooted by Vulture just in case we want to boot off the ISO. We don't. So I will just let the instance restart and automatically enter the recovery console again. One of the options in the recovery console will be to start a command prompt, which we will be using. At the command prompt you will notice me start a couple of copies of Notepad. One will be used as a basic version of File Explorer to see what disks we can see and what drive letter has been assigned to them, because I'm lazy, and I think it is easier to use Notepad for that purpose than the command prompt itself. You will also see me cut the current path showing in the command window and paste it into Notepad. That is because the colon and a backslash characters don't seem to work whilst in this console window but I need them for the two commands I need to type. As both characters are in the path string I can cut and paste them from that, when they are needed. The other notepad window will be where I type the commands before copying them to the command prompt for execution. You will notice that the recovery console cannot yet even see the Windows operating system partition until we install the vert IO driver in it. The driver for the recovery console itself will be installed from the command prompt using the pnputil command. We are unable to use the dism command for this, as it cannot add drivers to a running image, as this recovery console is, and it is also not able to update Windows PE images on which the recovery console is based. Once the recovery console is updated we will be able to see the Windows operating system partition, and to prove it for this demo I will be showing you the file I put onto it at the very start. Now that the vert IO driver has been installed successfully for the recovery console, we can then look at the second command to install the vert IO storage driver in Windows itself, so it boots normally in the future. We will be installing the vert IO driver in Windows using the DISM command, and not the PNPUTIL command we use to install the storage driver in the recovery console. This is because the PNPUTIL command only updates what is running at the moment, which is the recovery console, and so not the Windows operating system we are trying to update. That is done by the appropriate DISM command as that is able to update offline non-running images. You will also notice during the demo, that although I have the two commands I am going to use on screen locally I am not able to cut and paste them to any application inside the console window, so I have to type them again. Now let's start the actual demo. On the server information page select the settings tab, then on the left hand menu select custom ISO. Ensure that the custom ISO containing the vert IO drivers is selected and press the select ISO and reboot button. After a few seconds press the view console icon. 
after about a minute the recovery console starts asking what language it should use. Select the language, then troubleshoot, then the command window option. At the command window type notepad twice. Then in one of the notepads select file then open. As you can see all that is available currently is the recovery console on drive X and the vert IO CD on drive D. Type the first command into notepad, and then execute it in the command window. As you can now see we are able to get to the main VM partition as drive letter E. Now type the second command into notepad, and then also execute it in the command window. When successful, close the command window, and then select turn off the PC. Then from the server information window on the Vulture website, restart the server. After a couple of seconds, open the console, so you can see the boot process. The server should boot normally. Log on, and install the rest of the vert IO off the CD in the normal way using device manager, then you're finished.